We are now joined by one of the greats, truly one of the greats of football analytics. Please welcome back the founder and editor-in-chief of Football Outsiders, friend of the show, Aaron Schott. Oh, yeah! Hey. Ow! Aaron, we are so happy to have you usually in studio, but you still somehow got these gifts to us. The newest Football Outsiders Almanac, it just came out. It says, Aaron Schatz and experts are back with the most authoritative and innovative guide to professional football for all season, offering more cutting-edge statistical analysis, obsessive film study, and trademark humor. I love it. It is out now, available on Amazon. You can download it on footballoutsiders.com as well. Talk to me about this puppy. Other than the fact that it well, can make me like six inches higher if I sit on it, what can we look forward to in the 2021 edition? Yeah, as always, we've got chapters on all 32 teams and a new way to access them this year in the electronic version with online chapters. We've got uh, our Kubiak fantasy football projections with comments on all the skill players, quarterbacks, wide receivers, running backs, and tight ends. We've got previews of the top 50 college teams. We've got all of our obsessive film study and statistical analysis in there, over 500 pages. This is our 17th edition, and we think it's our best one yet. Mm. Always awesome stuff, Aaron. We appreciate you sending us a copy every year. Uh, the NFL added a 17th regular season game beginning this year. Records like single season pass mm. yards and touchdowns could well be within striking range. But what single season record do you think will be untouchable? I think the most untouchable single season record is Night Train Lane's 14 interceptions way back in 1952 because interceptions have gone down so much in recent years. Last year, Xavier Howard had 10. That was the most that anybody had had in over a decade. So it's very unlikely that anybody's gonna get close to Night Train Lane's 14. That's so interesting because we keep saying it's a passing league, it's a passing league. You would think cornerbacks would have more of an opportunity to get picks. Um, now we know teams like the Chiefs and the Bucks will perform well. We're all sure on that. But what are some non-playoff teams from 2020 that will most likely succeed in 2021? I would be looking for the return of the New England Patriots. We have a variable in our defensive projections that's based on the amount of returning or added talent on defense. And the Patriots have added or returned with Dante Hightower coming back more defensive talent than any team in the last 18 years. So we expect their defense to rebound to being one of the best in the league again. So even if their offense is a little bit below average like it was last year, that is going to be a playoff team. Ooh. And that defense will go against you-know-who week four in Foxborough. All right, Mr. Schatz, this is when we ask you to put on the black hat. Now, we like to get excited about the big offseason moves and the draft picks. We like to get optimistic. However, what team that has been hyped up will underperform this season? Not a big fan this year of the Los Angeles Chargers. I think everybody is expecting a big second-year leap from Justin Herbert. But the fact is, Justin Herbert was already so good last year. Quarterbacks who are that good as rookies don't take second-year leaps because they're already really good. And on defense, I don't think that they have the right players to do what Brandon Staley did with the Rams last year. There is no Aaron Donald. There is no Jalen Ramsey. We don't see their defense being above average. So we see the Chargers as being a below 500 team this year. We'll see what Derwin James has to say about that shots. All right, let's talk about this. By the way, uh, a mention of Shailene Woodley and Miles Teller in your book, which I didn't didn't expect, didn't have that one going. So we've got some uh, metrics on them and the Green Bay Packers as well. You, my friend, have an incredible, an incredibly impressive track record when it comes to picking Super Bowl teams. Uh, who is going to play at SoFi Stadium, in your opinion, using analytics in Super Bowl 56? Well, we've got the numbers coming out with Tampa Bay and Baltimore, but my personal choice is actually for Kansas City against the Dallas Cowboys. Wow. All right. <laughs> Any thoughts on that, gentlemen? Well, why is that your personal choice if the numbers say otherwise? What, how come? Be because the fact is that the numbers represent the average of a range of possibilities, and you can see teams being at the low end or the high end of that range of possibilities, and I just happen to personally be a very big Dak Prescott believer, and I think that the Cowboys' defense could be anywhere from good to bad, and I think it's a little bit more likely to be good, 
And I wouldn't be surprised if Tampa Bay eventually got a little bit derailed by injuries. They were the healthiest team in the league last year, and they're completely covered at every position, but they don't have a lot of depth at most positions. Hard to sustain back-to-back. -back. Interesting, as uh, always, from Aaron Schatz. I'm sure the uh, overlords at the NFL and NFL Network very happy to hear a Dallas Cowboys pick in the Super Bowl. With the Kansas City Chiefs, that would be absolutely electric. Thank you so much, Aaron Schatz of Football Outsiders. We appreciate the almanac. Go get it. Download it at Amazon or over at their website right now. Thanks, Aaron. Thank you for having me on the show, guys.